Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hello, hello, everybody. I am Ross Morasso back with my continuing series with my guest, Randy Swain. He is a life, organizational, and company leadership coach. And he's been at this for quite a minute. If you have heard us talking before, <laughs> you know our conversations can go really deep. And there is always so much to talk about since we're only tackling the topics of having our all of our hopes, dreams, and goals come true, mm -hmm. sourcing it through leadership and teams. Randy, welcome back to the show. Honored to be here. Uh, Ross, always great to be here with you. So what is new in the leadership world? Well, it, it, it's very aligned with some of the stuff. I know you and I chatted just briefly on a couple of things prior to uh, the meeting today, and they're very aligned with when you're trying to lead a team in a rapidly changing environment. You've, you've heard me say a number of times where leadership is not just an academic thing. It's not just a, you know, kind of go down the road kind of thing. It's something that's adjusted and adapted and 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 an interesting artistic journey if you will in some respects you can't and, paint by number right you know what that's right <laughs> that's right and you know it, it, it's amazing it's uh you know the speed is this such this is how far you'll go unless you're right at Mach one in which case or if you're going close to the speed of light all that can change a little bit so but yeah it's um uh, it, it is sort of interesting, and that's why it's a, it's a little bit of a challenging world. Anybody can become a good leader, mm. but but realize that leaders are not born. They are developed and created through the journey and with what you learn and what you experience and what you see. And that's been true in my life. I, I was very fortunate in my aviation career and in the military career to have served with some of the most incredible leaders you'd ever even imagine. And, and a lot of what I've learned and what made me become somebody uh, wasn't anything that I just went road academic, but I experienced and I saw and I observed and I saw the real success and value of it. And so that's really key. And I know you and I were talking about a, uh, just very briefly, we didn't talk very long on it, but talked about uh, something that was very aligned in both of the things that we had been looking at over the last week or so. And uh, if you don't mind, just kind of share just very briefly kind of what you were talking about, because it's very aligned with what I'm about to say as well. And so uh, I know it was talking about that one aspect there. Sure. You know, I had heard this somewhere else in my life and I said, you know, I'd like to get Randy's thoughts on this. And by the mm -hmm. way, you all can engage Randy Swaim at coachingforrelevance.com. I'd be remiss not to say that, although we can see that over your head. Thank you. <laughs> but what I had <laughs> heard was this concept of strength through vulnerability. And a lot of times in the world, we think we need to, if we're going to be a leader or just be respected in the world, we need to show that we're perfect and we know everything and we need to do. But when you, when I ha was listening about what some of the great leaders of yore have accomplished, that they have the courage to be vulnerable and create a space where vulnerability being expressed from their team mm -hmm. is accepted and used in a productive way. And I wanted to ask you if that's something that ever shows up in the work that you do. Uh, I, I will tell you this, that it is surprising in the way that it does show up. And when you mm. talk about being vulnerable, there th that is a very key aspect of it. You know, some of the superficial narcissistic society members sometimes think that leadership is just you go up and be the top and just point fingers and yell and all this sort of stuff. But you know what? Leadership is a lot better than that. Sometimes when you see somebody on your team struggling with something, leadership is coming alongside and almost help giving them a sense where you're walking the journey with them in a way. Uh, but it really is interesting because when you talk about modeling, which is a key aspect of true leadership, you know what? People on your team, if they're feeling vulnerable, if they're feeling like, boy, I don't know, you know, when they see that you actually sometimes may have felt that, but they see how you were able to break free of it and overcome it. 
And that kind of communicates to them, you know what? If they can, I can. Let's do mm. this. And 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 there's a lot of aspect about that sort of modeling the behavior. It doesn't mean that you're fake. It doesn't mean that you say, well, you know what? Uh, I'm not really too vulnerable on this. I've been successful at this for the last 30 years or something like that. But it does mean that you communicate in such a way that it doesn't knock them off. And, I, and I'll just share a collateral bit of this sure. um, that I heard just within the last couple of weeks. And, and what it was was a lady that was being interviewed and she talked about and, and she said it more in a faith based thing. I'm saying it in a leadership aspect of it. But she said um, it, it's a good picture to take what you talked about into a leadership role. Um, she talked about a key difference between guilt and shame. And mm. it's like, you know, when you're progressing, when you're overcoming something and you're becoming somebody that's really valuable to the organization. You may make some mistakes along the way. And you know what? I, I, I think I shared with you one time before that, that this happened. I think <laughs> I think about 13 years ago, you know, I, I'd gone up to a leadership conference in uh, Tulsa and, a, and a, a good friend of mine at the time who was the founder of Your One Degree. Um, he was a he had a career of executive experience and stuff. And uh, we were sitting there just having a cup of coffee. He, and he looked at me, he said, you know, Randy, he said, I got to tell you something. I really... There's one thing I am so proud of, but, of, uh, you know, about you. And I said, really? And coming from his background, it was like, really? He said, yeah. And I said, what's that? And this is what he told me. I think I've shared this with you one time before, but he looked at me and he said, Randy, what I see in you is you're willing to go forward and make the mistakes necessary to learn and grow mm. and overcome and become. And I said, well, that has been a lot of my journey. That's for sure. And he said, I want you to know that with my experience as a leader, that is something I am so proud of you about. And, and it, and it is this aspect of, you know, when, when you're, when you're somebody on your team is struggling or somebody made a mistake as a leader, do you try to, cast all this shame on them or do you just help them sense the guilt of the mistake and what they can do to put the shame aside and overcome that and this lady it was very interesting she talked about she said so often and this is a key with people that don't understand leadership when you talk about vulnerability this is one very subtle aspect where leaders have to almost be a little bit vulnerable mm. in it because she said that in her life, what happened was she'd made all these mistakes. And she said she just, her entire thing went to shame on herself, not the guilt of just what she did wrong. And and she said that there was this whole aspect of why even bother? I mean, you know, why even, I'm nothing, you know, I'm, I'm you know, and that was shame that was coming on her. And, and it was causing her to basically be sort of pushed into a cage or a, or a cave or something, you know, and not even have the courage to walk out and walk the journey kind of thing. And, you know, when you talk about a leadership role, if, if when you're, when your team makes a mistake or they, or they, they don't quite get to the satisfactory response you were hoping for, perhaps, how do you lead? How do you engage with them? Do you come across and put all the guilt on them mm. personally? Or do you interact with them in such a way that they begin to say, you know what? Yeah, we made a mistake and I'm aware of that. But you know what? Here's what I need to be on the lookout in the future when that comes up. And you know what? Here's how we can do that differently. And here's what we can be aware of that might come on scene. And you know what? The leaders, true leaders have to engage in a way where yes, they they get a sense of a little bit of guilt on the mistake where they weren't quite successful, but it's not something where you push it all on them personally and make them feel like they're not worth anything. And that's a that's not like an either or, there's a whole spectrum in there. And if you get somebody who's trying to cast blame games on your team and things like that, as a leader, yeah, you need to come over there and really stick it to that. Yeah, shut that down. 
Yes, exactly. But if you if you if you have somebody that just knows they make a mistake, are you aware as the leader in such a way that you're connecting with them in a way where they go, you know what, I made that mistake, but you know what, they still believe in me. You know, let's let's step forward and make that ongoing. Let's let's do this. And and so it's really an interesting point with what you brought up about that vulnerability. This is a, a, a kind of a subtle way how the leader has to be vulnerable. You know, so many people in our society, they think that if something doesn't go just right, I'm just going to go point fingers and blame cast blame game and all that. You know, that's not how you that's not you know how you are a leader. Uh, leaders connect with the people. And if they're just constantly making excuses or not taking it seriously, then yeah, you may need to be a little bit stronger against that. But if you get somebody that you sense is feeling a little bit of a shame on the failure that they had, you know, if it's something that's just critical, obviously if it's breaking a law or something, okay, that's bad. Yeah, no two ways about it. But if it's something where you can come alongside and say, yeah, so what do you need to do? What, what are you going to do different as you go forward on this uh, and all that? And you coach and you kind of lead them in such a way where they are actually better off in the future on that. And you know what? If you can do that well, then guess what? You're actually making your company and your organization better because as this person grows, they're going to be more ready to take on the higher level positions and do it effectively and well. And so there's aspects of that when you're talking about this aspect of leadership. Uh, And, and, you know, one of the things that I kind of throw out on when you're looking at neuroscience and the chemicals that your brain releases, the two that sort of come to mind deal with the uh, aspect of uh, Mm. oxytoxin and oxytoxin is the chemical that your brain releases in the thermal, you know, uh, connections and all that, gives a person a a sense that they're thriving socially in the team. The other one is the the chemical. Real quick here, I want to make sure. So oxytocin, this would be the chemical that we would want our body to be releasing, right? Like a sense of well-being, like that's what that chemical does. Because it feels like they're part of your team. They're not Mm. being pushed out. Yeah, yeah. It's got that sort of uh, you're, you're thriving socially within your team. They're not casting you aside. They're not sitting there and blaming it all on you kind of thing. Um, The other chemical is the chemical of cortisol. And that's the, that's a chemical that your brain releases in the nerves and all, which basically maximizes stress. Mm. It, It causes things to not believe. And like I say, the, to a certain extent, if you look at it from that, uh, from the guilt and I can acknowledge the guilt of the role perhaps that I had that caused this to not go as well as we would have liked. I could still be part of the team when the team says, okay, let's look at how we can ad- tweak that and adjust it and do better at that next time going forward. Or how can we recover from this particular uh, uh, situation and, and make it better? And there's that team synergy that comes, you know, the oxytoxin really just gives you a sense of that, that feeling of that synergy and oneness. But you know what, if I come to somebody and I'm trying to make them shamed because they didn't do just what I wanted in the way I wanted it and all that kind of stuff, guess what? They're probably releasing cortisol and they're getting very stressed out, highly stressed where they may start uh, reacting emotionally and and not intelligently, not as a team. And you're starting to, when you do that as a leader, if you're generating that, you're starting to cause divisions in your team because people start looking at the other team members and go, well, they hate me. They don't even want me part of this team anymore, you know, which may not be true. And so there's a lot of aspects like that when you're talking about a, a challenging, rapidly changing environment. And that's one area where a, a leader has to have a sense that they are vulnerable. What they're going to do is they're not just going to play the dictatorial game. Now, mm-hmm. if there's somebody that's being stupid, you know, doing illegal things or, you know, you know, blame game and, you know, bad mouthing everybody and all this kind of stuff. OK, yeah, you need to step up for that. But but um, but do you have the sense where 
somebody's going to go in there and act in such a way that the team is doing great and the team is better off after we get past this. Because you know what? Almost any organization out there has had difficult times. And you know what? When you overcome those, all of a sudden miraculous things happen because of what you learned in the struggle. And yeah, I've heard leader, it said that you have to break down sometimes to break through. You know what? You do. You do. You really do. And does the leader of the team have true insight on that for this situation? And that's where a, a leader has to sometimes be a little bit vulnerable and say, I'm not just going to kind of dictate and point fingers and blame and threaten people and say, you better do this. You know, you better do it better next time or anything like that. But that I come along to where when we get better, the team actually senses more synergy and more team and more social togetherness, if you will, in stepping forward. And when you talk about that aspect of vulnerability, that's where you're talking about that, the value of that. And you know what, if your team doesn't have that little bit of insight of when that's the important part, um, you got to know when to do it. And it's, and it, but it's just very interesting when you kind of bring that aspect out and you look at it because that's uh, a key part of that. And like, like when we were chatting before I said, boy, these two are very aligned in, in many ways. Cause it's, you know uh, you know, yeah. Do you want to, kind of, does a person need to know when, what they could have changed and what they could have done better to make this work better? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're doing it in such a way that they just feel totally shame and why, you know, I'm not even worth anything anymore. I'm shutting them down and I'm keeping them from being able to step forward. And so it's, it's, it's that part of, you kind of have to see it, that that's part of the art, artistic nature of, of leadership. And, and the big part of that is guess what? Every single person you work with is a little bit different. Mm, you know, I, as, as you mentioned about growth, you know, through mm -hmm. this and watching your team grow, I'm reminded of how Thomas Edison talked about, you know, he failed so many times at making a light bulb. And, you know, he just said, I just learned one more way to not make a light bulb. And, Bingo. Right. Bingo. And so I think with leaders, sometimes, you know, that we learn from our successes. And I've heard people say in the past, I've always learned a lot more from my failures. And so some of us believe that talking about or reminding people about our failures Mm -hmm. It's a sign of weakness or something that's being you're vulnerable, you know, being vulnerable and talking about that. But as I'm hearing you to be a leader, you have to be willing to offer those experiences to your team of your own personal failures of years past so that they mm -hmm. might have the opportunity to grow. Am I getting that right? Well, to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, if you know, there, there's a there's kind of a, a fine line between them. But, yeah, you want to be able to model the behavior and mm. to model the nature. And you know what? If if the team thinks that you're just Superman and you're just perfect and you've never done anything wrong in your life and, you know, why am I even here? Because of, well, with my mistakes and all this kind of stuff, you know what? You sit there and you go, you're screwing up. You're not getting it done. But to a to a level where my team gets a sense of how to do that, when I can come through, and this is kind of what I've struggled with. There are things, you know, I've, I've made a lot of good things. I've, I've, I've overcome and I've basically, I've achieved a lot of cool stuff in my life. But you know what? There were some times when I failed and I learned from it. And, and uh, there's been a few times throughout my, you know, 50 year, 50 year journey here kind of thing. There's been a, a few times where I've been able to look at somebody after they shared something with me and I go, you know what? I know what you're talking about because I've that was a struggle for of mine for one at one point, and they looked at me like really. I went, "Yep." Yeah. So you have my compliments. You can you can overcome that, and that and that's a key part of you know leading your team and who they are, not just kind of dictating you know laying down the law and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so that's just something to think about when you're and and you know, if you think about somebody on your team. You know, very a lot of people have this mindset that, well, if 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 they're not where I want them right this second, mm. you know what? I'm going to badmouth them on the appraisals. 
and Yikes. stuff like this, right. as opposed to somebody who really is struggling, but boy, they are showing that they can overcome that struggle. Boy, you know what? Yeah. You know, you're making incredible progress with it. Boom. Let's call attention to that. And I want you on my team, you know, kind of thing. And so th that there's a lot of aspects like that. And that, but it's a key picture of what you were talking about with that aspect of vulnerability and how that has to be a, a little bit of an insight within the leader too, to make the team incredible and to really be successful. So the balance there, then maybe what I'm hearing from you would be, if you're going to talk about past failures, it would then also have to be complemented with, but here's the lesson I got out of it. And then likewise, as we're addressing your failure right now, mm -hmm. like how do we learn from it as opposed to just, you know, metaphorically petting somebody's head and saying, it's all going to be okay. That would be incomplete. It's more about saying, look, I don't need you to go into a closet here. We, let's deconstruct this so that we can, be, you know, all grow together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is a, and that is a key part of it. And I, and, and, and by the way, it sounds like the, uh, uh, the autobiography of my life's journey and all <laughs> is, is probably going to be published within the next six to seven months, probably. Okay. And there's a, several times in there where they see a real growth and achievement in it. But I also call out attention to sometimes where I really struggled with, something that that had been put into me from my childhood and i had to overcome it and you know what if you if you just go and just play this the superficial salesy game of i'm all that don't you want to follow me? you know don't you want to be with me you know and all this kind of stuff you're not getting it done you know you you, you it, what you said is is correct people find a lot more value and a lot more belief when uh you come along and they you know when and, and what I typically do is I give them a sense of what they're feeling, what they're experiencing. And I'll say, what do you need to do? And, and you know, generally when they tell me a little bit and I say, what's it going to take to have the courage to do that? Mm. And they, and they, when they talk about that, I sit there, I say, you know what? I'm proud of you. You know why? Because there was a time in my journey where I had to struggle with that also. And they look at me like, really? Yep. You have my compliments. You can do it, you know, kind of thing. And so all of that, when you talk about this aspect of vulnerability, it doesn't mean that you try to paint yourself as somebody that can't be a leader. No, there's a reason you're in a leadership role. And it doesn't mean you just kind of completely badmouth yourself across the board all the time. No, that's not what we're talking about. What we are talking about is the extent to which this aspect of understanding you know, this aspect of the vulnerability aspect in your leadership role and your in your techniques. And and if you can adapt a coaching facilitative leadership style, you can do that in a way that the people may not even realize that's what you're doing, but they get the incredible value out of it. And 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 yet you did that. You let some of that vulnerability kind of show you how you really need to do that. And the people gain a lot of value out that. And, you know, when they walk out and they say, you know what? These people believe I can do this. You know what? Maybe I can. Let's do this. And and let's overcome this and, uh, and, and learn from this. And so those are all aspects about this when you're talking about leading your team. And, and there's uh, ways where you can, if, if all you're doing is threatening and, and trying to throw shame on somebody because they just didn't do it just the way you wanted or whatever, you know, kind of thing, guess what? You may, you're, you're, you're not getting it done well and stuff. But if you see somebody feels guilt because they didn't quite do it as well as they would have liked to, but you help them overcome that guilt and grow and become and learn and, 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 and modify and, and improve, you know, that's huge. And you do that by not throwing shame in their face or not eliciting that shame. And then because shame, you know, makes them feel like, you know what, I'm nothing. Why even bother? I'm nothing. And it could and yet, stop them from moving and taking chances in the future. And you need your team to do that, right? That's exactly right. Because they say, you know, you know, they're going to, they're going to yell at me if this doesn't get done perfect. And I don't even have what it takes to do it perfect. And that's kind of the way they sense it inside. Or if they're marching in that direction, 
and their whole brain is how you're going to blame everything else if this doesn't work right you're not focused on what you need to focus on but you know what mm. if you if you if the leader comes across with this strictly shame mindset that that you're communicating to people it shuts everything down and you don't get to where you want to go it and seems so like it could be a distraction too right so now you've got is. people worried about being berated by their boss or leader instead of just focusing on the task at hand yeah exactly Exactly. And and so all of those are aspects of this picture that that you and I were just briefly chatting about before the uh, the session here today and everything. But it was very aligned when you look at the neuroscience chemicals that the brain releases and the aspect of guilt versus shame. And when you talk about this vulnerability aspect of it and, you know, one of it, you know, are you leading your team in, in a way so that even though when they feel like there's a lot of risk and they're scared of the risk, they feel that they can step forward anyway and, and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of that sort of stuff that's wrapped up, particularly if you're, you know, when you're leading your team in an unpredictable, you know, rapidly changing VUCA environment where not, not everything is guaranteed in today's world. Not everything is just purely academic. Um, you know, are you leading your team in a way, in, in a way where not just they're getting this rote thing done today, but they're catching the vision. They're better for going forward in the company. They see the vision. They they are going and it takes you a lot further than you ever imagined for your team. And your boss comes to you and says, man, you guys did incredible. Mm. And you go, well, I'll tell you what. And one of the one of the uh, uh, lines that I love in a movie, I can't remember the, which movie it was, but I remember the line kind of thing that a guy was a, was applauded and and uh, but the guy did not want to take the credit for it because his boss was standing right in back of him and the boss kind of took his hat on him and he just kind of lightly slapped his shoulder. He said, go ahead and take it. You, you guys did it. And, and, and that's what a boss does. That's what a true leader does sometimes really makes that happen so that your people become amazing. And, uh, and as I've said on shows before, and I know we're getting close to the end, but as, as I've said on shows before, you know, in today's world, lead your team in a way, and this comes from the Navy top gun school, but lead your team and develop your team so that they can operate for radical success one inch from out of control at all times, you know? And guess what? When you talk about what we brought up today, this aspect of vulnerability and, and guilt versus shame and all of the neuroscience aspect of that, all of that comes to play with that. And so it's it's just critically important and it's a critical part of true leadership. I love it. Randy, thank you so much for this conversation today. I look forward to having Many more of them with you. Randy Swain, life leadership, organizational and company coach. You can find him at coachingforrelevance.com. And that the website is F-O-R relevance. But then you can yes. also reach out to Randy at Randy at coaching for relevance, the number four dot com. Go to his website and look him up. I know you won't be sorry. Randy, thank you so much for being with us today. Sounds good, Ross. Well, listen, it'll be an honor being with you next time. So it's always a pleasure, my friend. Enjoy the rest of your week and thank you all for tuning in. I am Ross Morasso. Until next time. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network.